Hi, I'm Todd Nock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So for today's art video, we're continuing this three-part series of this Captain America commission. So now we're up to step two, the inking stage. So I'll uh, share with you my tips, tricks, and the tools that I use to ink this piece. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to inking. All right, so here we go. Here's the, uh, the artwork here done on a nine inch by 12 inch piece of Canson recycled Bristol board. So in our previous video, I inked pretty tightly. This is very tight pencils, uh, far tighter than what I usually do here on YouTube. Um, so when I uh, pencil this tightly, what I wanna do here before going into inks is take my art, kneaded art gum eraser, which we, you saw me use last video. I'm just gonna do kind of a light erasing just to kind of break up some of these lines here. Just kind of give myself a, a little bit of a ghost image. I'm still able to see all the details but this is um, gonna help make things a little easier when I go to erase. I won't have to bear down quite so hard to erase all the graphite lines. And it helps make it a little clearer what I need to ink. So it's really gonna, this step will just really help um, for the overall finished inked product. So just a quick little erasing there. Now, as you can see, we can still see the details pretty well, but it's now probably half as vibrant, half as dark as what it was when I finished the initial pencils. So now I'm gonna use my Pigma Micron pens. I like to use the 01 and 005 here for some really tight details, smaller details like in the face. And then I have the 08 that I'll use for a lot of the more um, the perimeter and uh, outlining strokes. So um, let's zoom in here just a bit so you can see the details as I work on the face. Make sure we're in focus. All right. So I always like to start, especially when I'm working on the face, start a little thinner, because I can always make the lines thicker if I need to, to give it the, the pop and the, the depth that I'm looking for. It's easy to make thin uh, lines thicker. I would say pretty much impossible to make them thinner without using some sort of white paint or correction ink. But since this is a full color piece, I wanna make sure I don't have to use any type of correction ink for a piece like this. So start thin and then make lines thicker when needed or necessary. So most of my th general thicker lines are in the contour, the main shapes around the perimeter of, of Captain America and like different uh, key aspects like his ear here or when we get further down like the inside of this line of his pectoral muscles, just kind of the main base shapes are going to have a bit of a thicker line. So what I'm... The, with the use of thicks and thins in our, these are called line weights, like the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, the line weights help convey depth, like what's in the foreground, what's closest to us. So if lines are thicker, they, they, they give the illusion that the, the object is closer to us. If the lines are thinner, it can give the illusion that something is further away and then medium lines for the mid-ground. So foreground, background, and then the mid, mid, middle ground or mid-ground in between. Now, uh, with a piece like this, Captain America pretty much is on pretty much the same plane. You know, he, he, we're not gonna have some things that are way up in the foreground and way, way far in the background, but there are some very subtle 
um, differences. Like this head is further in the foreground than this shoulder. His shield is further in the foreground than the rest of his body. So there are those types of aspects where I can play with a little bit of depth as well. So these are things I'm going to keep in mind, as well as light source. So our light is coming from above. So things that are overlapping, like this chin overlaps his neck. So that chin would cast a shadow. So I'm going to make that that section underneath his chin a little darker, actually significantly darker, to convey a shadow underneath. So a lot of it is just kind of, as we go, I just kind of make these decisions as I encounter them. So just putting a little th thicker line under at the bottom side of that wing gives it a little more weight, a little more depth because it's sitting on his forehead. It would be on the opposite side of the light source. It would cast a teeny tiny shadow. At the very least, so it gives it a little bit of weight there on the page. So I'm using the 01 micron right now. I switch out as I go throughout the illustration. Any given illustration, I'll be switching out pens depending on what size do I need. What size tip, the little tip here. Do I need a thicker tipped pen for broader strokes or do I need a finer tip pen for uh, finer details? So I'm keeping a little bit in mind uh, his chainmail texture here. How I translate that. Translating the wrinkles where his costume wrinkles, like at the joints, the sleeves, etc. Now I've practiced this a lot, so a lot of these lines are just from muscle memory, from training myself on how to uh, drop those lines for quick little lines like that, where I'm not overthinking it. That's why we say practice. And I like to say, pra I don't like to say practice makes perfect. I like to say practice builds confidence. So I become confident in my skills and I can trust that I, I can achieve what I'm, I'm wanting to convey. I can just, I know I'm going to hit those lines most of the time, I'd say 95% of the time, yeah, 95% of the time if I'm lucky, those numbers are bound to change depend, depending on the uh, given day, but I uh, feel fairly confident I'm going to be able to get the line the way I want, where I want it, but that's from hours and hours, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours of practice over the course of my 
my life and doing this again and again and again uh, because it's my job. Definitely more confident in my skills now than when I was in my younger days as a comic book artist because I've learned so much and still find new things to learn here and there or new ways to approach things sometimes as well. And maybe a new way to make the shapes of any given thing I'm drawing whether it be maybe like the, the way I draw fingers or kneecaps or eyeballs, whatever it is. So you see the, the main fingers here, thicker lines than these little knuckle details here where the fingers bend, the digits, the seams of his gloves, thinner lines. This helps keep the art from getting muddy. And when I do little detail lines like that, I'm keeping in mind the flow and the direction of that shape. It's not just throwing lines any old which way for the sake of throwing little detail lines down. You want them to have a reason for them to look believable. Otherwise, it can look like a cluttered, well, kind of like a cluttered mess. And that's no fun. Let's uh, work on this other shoulder here a little bit. Let's. Uh, where's that uh, French curve? If y'all saw the penciling video, you remember me using this French curve. Going to use this French curve for the inks as well. So I want that nice, clean, curved line. This is one of several drafting tools we use as comic creators. It's called a French curve. They come in different sizes and shapes, and you utilize the different curves on this oddly shaped tool to get just the right curve that you need For whatever it is you're illustrating. You just line it up to the pencil line, just as I did in the previous video where I lined it up to the sketch line to get that exact arc that I need. Just you want the edge to match up as best as possible with the line you want to draw. Fairly straightforward. In fact, let's, uh, let's do some inks on Cap's face here. So I'm going to switch to the 005. Since I'm now working with the tight details of the face. I want to keep these details crisp and clean. Don't want them to get all muddy. And when I say muddy, I mean like um, 
all the lines all real clumpy and it's difficult to to, to distinguish different aspects or features of his face. That's what I mean by muddy. It all kind of just all blends or clumps and globs together. Not what I'm shooting for. Down to the eyes itself. It can be very challenging. Definitely don't want things to muddy here. lower lip a little darker underneath that bottom lip because it would uh, cast a little bit of a shadow all right now I'm going to switch to the uh, 08 for that broader tip because we're going to put the black area here on his mask. through the cheeks. Over to the other side of the face. Just like that. And now I can use this to kind of build up some of the lines and some of the areas that I feel might need that. Now because the shield takes up a good chunk of real estate, we're gonna pull the camera back here a little bit, grab the French curve, and we're gonna start building this 
this uh, shield with French curve and and uh, ellipse template just like we did with the pencil version. Using the 08 micron right now. So just lining up my lines. Giving it a bit of a thicker line because I want it to stand off against his body since this is more in the foreground. So see, I just line it up just like I did in the pencil stage and just run the pen across the edge. Just like that. Then we're going to come in and do the next ring. Don't make the line quite as thick as I did for the outside edge. Because these details on the inside of the shield don't need to be as as thick. I want the thickness of the, the outer perimeter to be thicker so it has more weight. And then these lines on the inside can be a little thinner so it conveys more that it's a detail. Also, I need to be very careful and cautious to make sure ink is dry each, each time I pick up the tool and go to place it down for the next spot so I don't smudge anything. Something I have to be very mindful of. Sometimes I'll blow on the ink to make sure it's make sure it's dry. So now we're down to the inner ring. So this this aspect of using the French curve, the drafting tools to ink the shield doesn't take quite as long as it did to pencil it because I've already kind of figured out which which tools, which curves I need to ink the shield. Because I already did it once with the pencils. So it's a little, little quicker going than with the pencils. Still takes some time and effort to think it through, but it doesn't quite take as long. So that's our work with the French curve. Now we're gonna bring in the ellipse template. You might remember this from the previous video. And now we're going to ink the tops and bottoms curves of each ring. See, just like that. Now I flip it around using that same curve, the 1 and 5 eighths curve here on the 45 degree ellipse.
And let's do the bottom so I can stay focused on remembering to use the correct curve on the bottom as I did on the top. Which one did I use for this ring? I think it was the one in seven eighths. Looks about right. go. Just two more rings. go. Line it up. Flip it around. Line it up. And now for the top and bottom of the mo outermost ring, the actual edge. That line, I'm going to go over it once or twice so it's a little thicker because it is the actual perimeter of the shield. And the last swipe here. Just building up that line a little bit since it's the bottom of the shield. Want it a little thicker. So using these drafting tools can make the shield look uh, a bit cleaner, a bit, a bit more believably oval than trying to do it freehand. I'm sure there are people out there who can do it freehand, and God bless you amazing people. I'm a drafting tool kind of guy. I think many of us are when it comes to Cap's shield. So look into drafting tools for your art arsenal for drawing backgrounds, vehicles, weapons, or any other sort of inanimate object you might have to draw. Sometimes I use it for different textures like curved speed lines.
in my comics so that there are nice, crisp, clean, uniform lines. So now, the last line, the last side of this star. There we go. And we have a black section here. Since this is the blue part of the shield, we have to put a black chunk in here. Going to fill those spots in with black later, just because it's easier to erase first than fill in the black. creating a bit of a, a buffer perimeter so it makes it a little easier when I go in with the brush pen to fill in the black. Still using the 08 micron. Depending on how thick, how how much pressure I get, I can still get a bit of a variation in line weight. Build up a buffer here for this black part of his belt. Now X to remind myself, fill this in with black after I erase. Now for the pouches, I'm doing the um, basic contours, the outer edge, and then I can switch to the 01 micron, which is a thinner nib, and then come in and put in all the inside details. And you can see the variation with the thick lines and the thin lines. Keeps everything nice and clean. Back to the 08. shadow underneath those, those portions of the uh, pouch as it overlaps onto his pants. Some wrinkles to his trousers. some wrinkles here at the waist 
for his shirt. Just like that. Switching to that zero one for the crisp inner details of the pouch. Just like that. While we have the zero one, let's go ahead and draw in these st stripes. And I'm keeping in mind how the stripes would curve around his body a bit. And it's not straight up and down lines. It actually bend might be the word I'm looking for around his body a little bit. So let's ink the thighs here and then we'll come and we'll do the chain mail. Uh, as one of the later steps, and then we still have to add some details over here to the uh, reflection detail in the uh, shield. Since this is classic Captain America, he's got his super shorts. A little bit of a thicker line on the, the underneath part of his thigh here because it would be a little bit further away from the light. I'm not going to over render the muscles here on the legs with the inks because I'm going to use the color to really define those aspects. But I'm giving a little bit of definition. But I'm not going to be inking every muscle here on the legs. A little bit of a thicker line, a little detail there from the shadow cast from the uh, shield, or the, just the shield overlaying, overlapping. A lot of that will come with the color stage as well. So I'm going to switch to the zero one here. Add some Little detail hashing right there. Okay, so now we have the uh, chain mail. So as not to be too cluttered with chain mail, I'm mostly doing the darker. Lines that, I, lines that are darker towards uh, further away from the light source, and then the lines kind of break up as we move towards the light source. This gives me uh, what am I trying to say here? Gives me a chance to kind of just play with the shapes and not have to maybe necessarily draw every single chain in this mail. Allowing the viewer's eye to kind of, it allows you to fill in the blanks. And I'll kind of address it as well in the colors in the next video. But it gives me just enough. I think we had some heavier shadows through here, so we're going to add a little extra dark inside each each link, each little plate. 
see how it gives it just a little bit of depth, a little bit of weight. I'm going to add it through here, through the bicep portion for the way it overlaps. And we're going to come in here to the pectoral muscle part, just letting the line kind of break up as I get closer to the light source because the light's coming from above. I actually did myself a little bit of a disservice. I erased too many lines of my <laughs> chain mail, but if that happens, that's okay. You can just kind of rough back in anything that might be missing. And now my guidelines are back. A little bit here into the shoulder. I'm curving around each body part. Sometimes it's more of a subtle curve, but it just kind of does help give a feel of the roundedness of his muscles or body or whatever it is these chains are covering. Now we're going to cut back the other way. We'll add some darker sections to the chain mail in a little bit. Right now I just want to get the basic chain mail shape going. So every time I bring the pen down, I give it a little dot right at the bottom. Just like that. So lots of different ways to approach Cap's chainmail. You could probably look at 10 different artists and notice 10 different approaches to how they illustrate his chain mail, how they convey that texture. So feel free to experiment. Feel free to, you know, just play, play around with it. Play around with shapes and see what works for you. And if you like my technique, right on. More power to you. Okay, 
So now I need to add some of the darker areas. Now again, I made the mistake and erased a little too much. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a quick reminder of what was the shape of that of those black shadow areas. I'm going to go with a darker or my bigger uh, micron, my 08 here, because I need bigger chunks of black. So it's going to be easier to hit with a larger nib. just inside each of these links I am putting in a black shape that kind of fills it out leaving some of the the shape open for color now because depending on where how much shadow or light there is it's going to determine how much black I use in that link the further away from the light source, the more black I will use. The closer to the light source, the less, because more light is landing on that link. So you see we're creating this uh, sense of depth and weight with these, these shapes, with this black, these black areas. Just a little bit more as I come down through this, uh, through his pectoral muscle here, the bottom side of his pectoral muscle. A little bit up here on his shoulder. Since I conveyed that part right there, kind of reflect that through, kind of carries on through. sure that's dry. Then I've got his shield here. So the shield just in the red section creating this kind of big black amorphous shape. So it's reflecting the environment around him, maybe trees, maybe buildings, maybe a crowd. We don't know, it doesn't have to be detailed. Not this, this stage or being this close. At this distance, I guess, is a better word to say. Fill that black, fill that black. And 
And then I, uh, I'm going to use my French curve again. To get some nice, clean lines fading down away from the black, getting thinner and more sparse as we move away from the black area. Just like that. And then we're going to do the same, or at least similar, here on this other side. Not doing this in the white parts, though. I think it looks better to leave the white completely open. It's just more of a kind of a stylistic thing. I think it looks better not to have the black cutting through the white. Now when I take this to Copic Color in the next video, we're going to do some tricks to render this shield in some fun and cool ways. So we'll definitely get utilized color to uh, render out that white part of the shield, more so than line art. Maybe one more sparse line, just a little tiny line, boop, boop, like that. The shield, pretty much done. Let's just beef up that line right there. Beef up that line. And let's see. I. We're on the tail end here of this. Sometimes I like to go back over things, you know, I'll look at things and think, where do I need a little more, a little more volume, a little more weight? A little, where can I thicken up lines? Where do we need a little more pop? Usually it's on the outer parts. or the underside parts. All right, so we're gonna let this dry here for a sec. Okay, we're back. I took about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes to let that dry. Now I'm gonna use my art gum kneaded eraser. Gonna stretch it out to refresh it and I'm going to lightly erase the rest of these lines. Let's go ahead and take them all out now. Not much left to erase since I did that initial erasing, which makes it a lot easier to erase after the inks and not have the line work fade, which can happen sometimes. I know a lot of people say, huh? my line work fades whenever I erase. Yeah, that can be very common. Sometimes it depends on the pens. Sometimes it depends on the artboard. Maybe sometimes it might even depend on the eraser. I find the kneaded art gum eraser doesn't pull up graph, uh, the inked lines as much. But doing a pre-erasing before you start the inks can really help not have to erase so hard. Um, to get all those lines off, because you kind of already got a good chunk of them off to begin with. Now we just need to fill in these black areas, like on his belt and in these parts of his shield. So I'm gonna use the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. Use this brush tip to just go in here 
and fill in each part of his belt. And on this reflective section on the reds and blues of his shield. Red part, red part, and now blue part. It helps that I inked out a beefier line. Makes it easier to stay within the lines. and not risk losing the the shape because the brush tip went too far beyond the line. So creating that black buffer line can really help. And there we go. Pull the camera back here just a sec. And there's the inks for Captain America. So that's stage two. And there we go. The inks are done. Stage two is complete for this Captain America commission. All that's left now is to do the Copic color stage, which will be the next video, so stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please leave me a thumbs up and please leave a comment. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and set the notifications to alert you every time I post a new video or schedule a live stream. Gang, thank you so much. Hope you had a good time. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun.